One of the best ways to get your paintings to pop is doing an epoxy pour on top. I mean, it just makes it have this beautiful glass shine and makes the saturations really pop. And doing this on a big, gigantic canvas is awesome, but also a little difficult. But don't worry, in this video right here, I'm gonna give you my top lucky seven tips to dominate any gigantic, big canvas epoxy pour. Here we go. What is up, my name's Wild, and I'm here to help you be bigger with your creative adventure. On this channel, we do tips, tricks, tutorials, and how-tos to make sure you become bigger and better in your creative journey. If that sounds something awesome to you, do me a favor, hit that big red subscribe button down below. But now, let's move into our awesome tips. Tip number one that you wanna make sure you do when it comes to big canvases when you're doing an epoxy pour is make sure that your paint is completely dry. Think about it. When you're working on a bigger canvas, that generally means that you're using more and more paint, which means longer drying times. So make sure if you're using more paint, you give enough ample time to dry, otherwise you're gonna have a shell effect on top of like your acrylic paint or any type of paint you have. So when you add your epoxies and hardeners, it could react differently, not giving you a good seal, or in fact, it could add to cracking. Awesome tip number two is since we're working on a bigger canvas, when you pour epoxy in the center, it has a tendency to droop. We don't want that, so let's lift up and support that structure in the middle. I like to use tiles. Just go to any hardware store and buy old janky tiles. The reason this works so well is you can stack them on top of each other, giving you more room to play with the different heights. I also like to use cheap home material, old yogurt cups that you've cleaned out, or even packages I've gotten from Amazon that I sliced the, the cardboard off on the side. You can just use those to stack up to get perfect height. This will make sure that you have a nice even coating across your entire canvas. Awesome tip number three is to make sure we level our canvas correctly. On a big gigantic canvas, you wanna make sure you do five leveling points. One in the center that you do vertically and horizontally. Then each corner, you also wanna do the same leveling, vertically and horizontally. The reason you wanna do this is since the canvas is so big, there can be multiple points where it's kind of drooping or swaying or sagging in certain parts. So we wanna make sure we make micro adjustments here to make sure it's all the way even and level across. So that way when we add our epoxy, it's not gonna to run to one side or it's not gonna be an uneven coating. So our canvas is dry, we've supported the center and now we've made sure that everything is level. Now it's time to clean our canvas for when we're gonna put our epoxy on. And our tip number four is I actually like to rub it dry with a microfiber towel. Then when I go across the entire canvas, I will take a hair dryer to blow off the micro dust that may be left there. Now, when you use a blow dryer to get everything off, you may put some particulates in the air, which I would recommend give it just a few moments for everything to settle before you do any epoxy pouring. So this way, nothing will kind of fall back into the epoxy, all right? Tip number five may be unavoidable for you depending on where you live, but if you can do your epoxy pouring in warmer weather, it will really help you out with your bigger canvases. The reason this helps is because the viscosity of the epoxy and hardener, when you do it in warmer weather, will actually be a little bit looser, which means you can push and pull it across your canvas with ease. When you do it in colder weather, it can have a tendency to bind up and pull closer together, which can lead to bad results, which can give you kind of like craters in the center of your canvas, which you don't want because once it hardens up, they're unfixable. So I recommend if you can, try to do your pours in warmer weather. Also, for a little small side note, check the back of your bottles or the box that you bought your epoxy in it'll tell you the recommended temperatures and each one's a little bit different, but on the warmer side, definitely helps a bunch. Awesome tip number six is all about getting those air bubbles and particulates out of your epoxy. A lot of people like to use toothpicks and I like that tip a lot. However, if you're working on a big gigantic canvas, it can be hard to reach over and across your canvas. For me to fix this issue, I love using wooden skewers, nice long ones. So that way you can pop bubbles, reach out and get particulates, or perhaps something like your hair fell in and you can just swoop up and pull it out. Using these long skewers are some of the best little tools that I've come across and they're super, super cheap. So make sure you get yourself some. All right, lucky number seven is to make sure that you wait 72 hours before touching your canvas after you've done your epoxy pour. 
Yes, you can go back and clean up a few hours or minutes after you wanna do for your edges or whatever you wanna do, or torch to make sure you get out micro bubbles or skewer, like we said, to get out bigger bubbles or particulates. But once you've done all that, don't touch, leave it alone for 72 hours. Since you're putting down so much more epoxy on top of this big canvas, it's gonna take a lot longer to dry. And I know it's gonna be hard because you're gonna look at that piece, you're gonna go, oh my gosh, this looks fantastic, and it will, but make sure you give it ample time. Most will recommend 72, but even on a bigger canvas, you may wanna even give it a little bit more than that, all right? Hey, future and more handsome wild cutting in on the video at the moment. I'm actually putting the project together and my friend took a look at it and mentioned that I should share with you an extra bonus tip that I do on all my epoxy pours on my paintings, but this one's actually more important when it comes to doing a big gigantic canvas. If you're going to mix a lot of epoxy, you need to make sure that you mix it thoroughly. And to help out with this, an awesome little cheat is using a paddle mixer that can go on a power drill. These are nice, easy, and you know what? They're actually really affordable. I'm actually gonna put one here on screen and I'll put some down in the video description below of ones that I've used and currently used now. Some are good for certain types of uh, mixing of paints and epoxy, so you can pick and choose what you like. But trust me, this will save your, your painting because it'll make sure that the one-to-one -one ratio is thoroughly mixed, making sure that it hardens up perfectly. And you know what? You're actually gonna save your hand because you don't have to sit there mix the whole time. So let's go back to old scrubby looking wild, but do me a favor and leave a comment down below letting him know how handsome he was back then, but new age wild is so way better. Like I said, epoxy pouring on top of your art piece really makes it shine and pop. I mean, just look at this. This is a beautiful piece. Granted, it's on a smaller, but it's hard to hold up the big canvas on camera here. Do this, it's awesome. It makes everything look so good and trust me, they'll sell super fast when you do a nice glass-like pour of epoxy on top of your art. Now, if you wanna see more art pieces like this or just more tutorials from me, I say I said tutorial rolls, but whatever, we'll go with it. You can take a look at the videos over to the side here or one recommended from YouTube in the bottom right-hand corner. My name's Wild, wishing you the best of luck with your gigantic epoxy pours, and I'll catch you all later. Take care, and of course, peace.